games and yeah magazine. The Battle of Hue refight one of the most epic battles of the Vietnam War. Solitaire gaming goodness from Jay Ward. And what you get with the Battle of Hue is one 11 by 17 inch map, play rate charts, and 85 one inch counters. High flying dice games, black shirts, red blood, the Battle of Guadalajara, March 8th to 23, 1937. This is a game designed by Paul Rohrbaugh. And what you get with this game are two 11 by 17 inch maps, 77 unmounted double sided counters, a play raid, and one rule book. Welcome to GMT's monthly update for March. In the new additions to the P500, a game by Tom Lehman, 1833 New England. This is a game for three to five people and you build stock portfolios and operate a railroad between New England and Montreal. Almoravid, Reconquista and Riposte in Spain, 1085 to 1086. This is a volume two by Volko Runke's Levy and Campaign series. It's a one to two player game. Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. This is a standalone game by Jason Matthews. It's a two player game. It's 1974 and the States and Soviet Union have been locked in a death struggle across the globe. Lee Birmingham Woods, Wing Leader, Legends, 1937th and 1945. This is Lee Birmingham Woods' fourth expansion to the series, and this game brings together a whole series in, a cross, in crossover scenarios. On the Horizon, a World War II block game featuring paratroopers, GMT's version of a 1980s victory game classic, could it be a Mark Herman game? And a game based on the Sekigahara system, also an operational level World War II game set in Italy. On the digital game side, Volko Runke's Labyrinth with the expansions by Trevor Bender. This is available or shall be available for PC and Mac soon. Twilight Struggle, Anata Gupta and Jason Matthews. It's available on Steam for Mac and PC, also for iOS and Android. Fort Sumter, the half-hour lunchtime game by Mark Herman, is available on Steam, Mac and PC, iOS, and Android. News you can use. There's an update kit for the third printing of The Hunters, a game by Gregory M. Smith. There's only 190 boxes left, so, uh, you know, booge, as we say here. Counter trays and white boxes are back in stock at the warehouse at GMT. I completely missed this opportunity to say a box and a lid are back in stock at GMT. There's also a solo system for Plains Indian Wars and third party games The Battle of North Kursk by Kuro Neko Design and Waterloo Napoleon's Last Battle by Companion War Games. Also, Mike Denson is looking for play testers for his The Last 100 Yards Volume 2. Go on the GMP, GMP, GMT website and look for Mike Denson's email and tell him Dan sent you. Have a good time. Strategemata and how the West was saved the Russo-Polish War, April to October, 1928 game by Stephen Pohl. The artwork by Krzysztof Korsenian. The most fertile ground for revolution was Germany. Political dissension had escalated into mob violence. Lenin decided to send Bolshevik troops to assist fellow socialists. Between Russia and Germany lay Poland. War was inevitable. How the West Was Saved, a game designed by Stephen Pohl, published by Strategemata. And Rob 
Gabor and the Strong Man of War Games was live on Board Game Geek TV with War and Pieces, which I was co-host, and we were talking about our five top lock and load games. Marco Omni Gamer reviews Winter Thunder, the Battle of the Bulge, a game designed by Brian Train. Rough Swordsman Wargamer is doing a playthrough part one of Nations at War, White Star Rising, a game designed by Sean Drollinger, published by Lack and Low Publishing. You want to know what's happening on the big board? I'll tell you what's happening on the big board. Big Man Kevin has a man-to-man -man chat with no other than Artie from Ardwolf Slayer. Plus, he has a look at the Jaws of Victory, the Battle of Course and Cherkasy Pocket, January to February 1944, a game designed by Milt Janoski, published by New England Simulations. And not sitting on his keister, Kevin the Big Man continues this onslaught of videos with another one, and he checks out The Battle for Normandy, which he calls BFN. He's doing it on purpose. It's personal. When he does stuff like that, like he's doing the OCS system of the of, of, from MMP, he, it's me he's talking to. He's doing it on purpose. He, he, but you know what? It's like I'm getting older. He wants my brain to work. So uh, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, rat. Uh, this is a game published by GMT and designed by Danny Holt. And finally, hopefully, he takes a look at... Waterloo 1815, a Mark Herman game published by C3i Magazine. Seek Out and Play has an excellent set of videos out on how to play Warfighter Shadow Wars. He talks about noises and location entrance costs and how to play event cards. The Chief of Bonding with Board Games is unboxing Europe Divided, a game designed by David Thompson and published by Phalanx Games, and also does a little bit of ham tag chit chat, and he says even some cop stuff. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is the South Shell Rise again from Victory Point Games. It's based on a book where the South uh, has uh, Confederate soldiers that are zombies that they use to fight the Union. The components for this game are excellent, um, especially for a little war game, and the gameplay is okay. We'll go over it more in the review. First game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Dogs of War from Victory Point Games. Reminds me a little bit of Wings of War. It's a card-driven uh, uh, game. It's actually they call it a Euro. It's actually just a, a regular board game, but looks kind of interesting. Next game we're doing a first look at is The King's War from Clash of Arms game. It's about the first English Civil War from 1642 to 1646. Looks like kind of a neat game. I looked through the rule book. Uh, looks pretty intriguing. And then the last game we're doing a first look at is Labyrinth from GMT Games, The War on Terror from 2001 to present. Um, it's got good components. The map looks great. Uh, it's basically a game where one side plays the terrorist and the other side uh, plays the Americans or allies, and the two sides have different mechanics that they use in the game. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. Game Table has a couple of interviews out from the Consum World Expo in Dallas, one being with Justin Langang and his game Warline Tactical Fantasy Battles, and the other is with John Krantz, and they talk about John Krantz stuff, Consum World, and Compass Games. Mo also interviews Steve Overton about his new game Contact Now, Ready Clips. Mo and I were also live with Kevin Sharp, and after I had to split, Artie came in from Ardwolf Slayer with a St. Patty's special edition of Whiskey Charlie. 
and the military board gamer continues his playthrough of the OCS system, Burma. The Burma Campaign of 1944. Combat Board Games is unbagging Invasion 1066, The Battle of Hastings, designed by Norman Smith and produced by Revolution Games. Combat is also unbagging Guadalcanal from Dark City Games, a game designed by George Du and Chris Chambers. And the gentlemen of the Players Aid are doing two unboxings this week. Alexander's unboxing Freedom from Phalanx Games, a game designed by Antonis Bagliatarkis, and Grant is doing an unboxing from White Dog Games, Don't Tread on Me, by Ben Madsen. They are also reviewing Tank Duo, Enemy in the Crosshairs, a game by Mike Bertuccelli, published by GMT. And Dad vs. Son continues his playthrough of Fields of Fire Volume 1, Hill 192, Offensive. And Lock and Load Tactical Digital Boot Camp Number 2, Basic Unit Controls. Assault on Vierville. Steve Jackson Games continues their March Madness with live playthrough of Car Wars 6th Edition. And Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer has Elise Gimpy's Gal doing a Gimpy's Gal Guesses The Hunters. This is a game designed by Gregory M. Smith, published by Consent Press, or GMT, or both. And also he does The Hunter's Review Through, Part 1 of the same. And the War Game Reviewer is back after two months, and this time he takes a look at Amateurs to Arms, a game by Clash of Arms Games, designed by Kevin McPartland and Jerry Childs. Ardwolf of Ardwolf's Lair is unboxing Tinian the Forgotten Battle, the Marianas Campaign, and also unboxes Harn Master, 3rd edition by Columbia Games. And Steve Dolges gives us a review of Ted Racier's game The Dark Valley and starts a new game, a CSL published game called 1870, The War Against the Empire, a game designed by Ray Weiss, published by Conflict Simulations. The soft-spoken but formidable foe, Jonathan Townsend, plays and gives you his thoughts of Austerlitz, 1805, Napoleon's Greatest Victory, designed by David Fox, published by GMT. And Il Professore, Riccardo Mazzini, has four videos out this week. The first one being a special announcement, and this comes from Italy, so basically he's he's saying what's going on in Italy, and uh, his hashtag is I stay home. And Vlog 41, parts 1, 2, and 3 are of Time of Crisis, a playthrough. This is a game published by GMT and designed by Ray Farrell and Brad Johnson. And Counterproductive Games unboxes Command and Colors Napoleonics, a game published by GMT, designed by Richard Borg. And Little Wars TV gives us a convention recap of Cold Wars 2020. And Kyle Seeley gives us a recap of his playthrough of Isandalwana from Soldiers of the Queen, a strategy and tactics number 95 magazine. And Jan Heinemann! Let's Play History continues his playthrough of Strategic Command World War II War in Europe plus their hobby general versus Let's Play History. They are playing Fields of Glory 2. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, Matt White and today I'm going to talk a little bit about a free game that I have been working on. Um, it's called The Final Roar. Um, it's a World War II game, as you can see, and it features um, a, a small squad of airborne survivors of a crash glider that gradually become more and more surrounded by various sort of German troops. Um, it's a game that uses my um, rules from a print and play game called Until the Bitter End. Um, you don't need to have played that game or own that game. Um, 
this game comes complete with all the rules, the counters, um, the map, and the scenario description. I'm just going to talk briefly, kind of about each one in turn. I'm not going to detail exactly all the mechanics of the game because I have a series of videos that details how the combat works, how movement works, um, how the activation works. What I would say is that it's a game that uses a pull chip mechanic. So you have a number of allied chips, a number of German chips, you put them into a cup, pull them out, and that determines uh, which um, side can activate. The game is uh, solitaire, uh, for solitaire and for two players. And there's a scenario specific to the solitaire and a scenario specific for two players. And there are rules specific to the two-player game and rules specific to the solitaire game. And they are all, all detailed. Um, the map, as you can see here, that I've uh, hand-drawn. Um, I wanted to do a map around this sort of clash, uh, clashed, crashed uh, glider idea that I've had for a little while now. So it's taken me a little time to be able to get the, the artwork done for that to the point that I'm happy with it. Um, and the map comes in in three sections, so you can. I'll just show, open up quickly. Uh, you can you get a, a a JPEG of each three pages, and each page has got the map cropped. So that's page one, for example. Um, that's the second one. So you can print each page out, and the printing uh, will work um, on US letter or uh, a a four here in the UK, and it's using the format that I've used on my print and play games in the past so you know it's been sort of tried and tested from different different people um, you also get uh, two counter sheets and um, this is the first one that has um, four US airborne counters as you can see there and uh, eight uh, German infantry counters that you can see there um, I did all the artwork for these um, a little while ago for these are from the second game uh, in the series of until the bitter end, I've just simply reused them for this um, this scenario. If you do own the game, um, if you would rather play with um, the British Airborne, then feel free. Um, the first game had a Fallschirmjäger expansion, so I did some Fallschirmjäger um, German paratroopers, German Airborne um, counters. So if you have those, you could also play this mission with those instead. It's entirely up to you. But like I said, you don't need to have those to play this game. It's, this game's complete. Um, there's your pull chips, they go in the cup. Then you have some gameplay um, related counters here, heads down and jammed. And again, I, I've done separate videos on all those mechanics and how all those mechanics work, so just check out my YouTube channel for that. And uh, that's the uh, second sheet of counters. So, not a huge amount of counters that you need. And I did this very deliberately for people so that um, you could print the game out with just a few sheets of paper. You need probably three sheets for the map um, and two sheets for the counters. And that's all you need to print out. There aren't too many to cut out. Um, certainly for the heads down and jammed counters, snap fire and wounded, you probably don't even need to print to mount all of those. I, I did enough so that you'd have plenty. Um, but, uh, you know, you could um, just mount a few of each of those and that probably would be fine. So I, I did it deliberately this way so it wouldn't cost folk a lot of money in terms of print cartridge ink and, and time to be able to get this game to the table. The other thing you're going to need is this scenario um, PDF, which you can see here. Um, that's my cover I did for it. Um, and the scenario PDF, kind of, uh, what I would recommend is reading the read me first uh, section first. Um, and that'll kind of tell you a bit about how to print the game out and how to mount it and things you do and don't need. Then there are some um, notes specific to this type of scenario because this scenario features a glider that um, the game previously hasn't hasn't featured um, then you get the scenario description and setup for the two player game so it tells you where to put the different uh, infantry counters where they can start their start setup positions it also tells you um, the reinforcements per turn how the bravery how many bravery points you use and again, I've done a separate video for how the bravery point mechanic works. Um, so I don't need to go into too much detail now. And then you get the solitaire um, scenario. So if you're playing it solitaire, you use this one. If you're playing it two player, you use the other. And they're, they're, fundamentally, they're the same. Um, it's just where there's specific things um, for solitaire and specific things for the, for the two player. Now, you're also going to need uh, the actual main rule book itself. Now, what I have done here is I've given 
uh, basically the latest rule book PDF away for free. Um, this is the rule book for the for my game called the Until the Bitter End. So it's a complete rule book for this game series. Um, this is currently on we're version 1.3, following loads of feedback from from different people who've uh, been playing the game. Um, so the one thing I would say this let's go back to the contents page for a section. This rule book covers all the rules for Until the Bitter End, of which this free game uh, use, utilizes many, but not every single one. So, for example, um, this game obviously will use things like um, all the different actions that you can do with the counters, so snap fire and firing and dancing, um, how to clear a jam from a, a jam from a gun jam, um, how the bravery points work. This scenario doesn't include any heavy weapons, so there's, there's no MG42 yet or anything like that. So you don't need to be, um, you don't need to use this uh, section, for example, in the rule uh, in the scenario. Neither does this scenario include any vehicles, and neither does it include any buildings. So those sections are included in the rules because this is the rules of the game series. But this scenario doesn't doesn't need those rules to it. So this um, this PDF is uh, 20, uh, 27 pages long. The reason for that is that it's split down into a sort of the mechanics for the game, and then any, and then and then effectively the, the rules for the solitaire version. So if you're only ever going to play the game solitaire, then you can read the sort of introduction. You could skim. I mean, just flip through the two player, and then when you get to the solitaire, that will then tell you every single rule you need for the solitaire, including the solitaire action. So fire action, for example. It's fundamentally the same in solitaire as it is two player, but it's there complete. So for for people who only want to play the game solitaire, this is the section you need um, from this point forward. And it also includes all the rules for the um, AI for the game as well. So um, in the German activation, so um, it has all those complete rules. Just to sort of skim through it very very quickly, um, the game uh, instructions will give you an overview of the game. Tells you how the the, um, what the numbers on the counters mean, and there aren't many at all. One of the things that's unique about this game, well, unique, there aren't many war games like this in the sense that one counter represents one man in the game. It's not that a counter represents a squad or a half squad, it's one counter represents um, uh, one soldier in the game. Uh, tells you how to set the game up, um, tells you sort of all the different um, actions that uh, a counter can take. So running, advancing, firing the weapon, charging towards the enemy, um, a snap fire, which is like an opportunity fire or uh, overwatch sort of fire, um, <clears throat> through to you know how to clear a jammed weapon and how to give medical aid to another counter. That rule you will, prob you will, <laughs> you will need uh, in this scenario because one of the um, US Airborne counters is already, uh, starts the game already injured and you'll probably want to give that counter medical aid so that that, that counter can get back into the fight as it were. Um, <clears throat> so the rules go through each one of those sort of section, each one of those mechanics, each one of those actions one by one. Um, I would say the game is uh, fairly light complexity and I designed it very specific that way. This is a game that you should be able to set up and play very comfortably in an hour if not if not less and I designed it very specifically to, to do that. Um, bravery points are worth calling out. Um, they enable you to uh, re-roll dice against your um, uh, for your counters. Um, so um, there's a here's an example. There's a video, there's a YouTube link in the rules. So when you get to that section, read that section, and then by all means uh, watch the YouTube video that I did, which sort of kind of talks you through how that mechanic works. So those all those YouTube links are in the rules as well. And uh, without going through every single thing, um, there we go. It, the rule book is complete. Um, it got everything you need and more. So, for example, there are no vehicles in the scenario, but because this is a this is the up-to-date rule book for the series of games, you'll see all the vehicle rules um, and rules for things like the bazookas and things like that. But like I said, you, for this scenario, you don't you don't need them. Um, so there you go. And then as we go down, same with buildings. Um, there are rules for the buildings. Um, so interestingly, infantry squad creation. In this game, um, each counter can have like a, an ability, and you you there's a squad table, and you roll on the squad table to see what the ability of that particular counter is, and then there's a separate PDF sheet um, 
which is on the board game geek which you can download and print out so you can keep a record um, of what counter has what ability so some of the counters for example um, they can reroll with shots if they if they roll the shot mechanic and it's got a very light um, uh, sort of RPG almost esque mechanic to it where you each counter can have their own ability um, and utilizing those abilities to the best of your um, advantage in the game is, is quite an important mechanic um, you, you can um, uh, play this game without that if you want to it's an extra layer of um, depth of mechanics to the game and you get everything you need to do that um, then we're into the solitaire game and the solitaire setup um, and again generally speaking the mechanics for the solitaire game are very very similar to the two-player game there's obviously these differences um, in this game, in the solitaire game, you're assuming to play the role of the um, American Airborne who have crashed their glider and the AI will, AI will take care of, of the German um, side. And um, then, if I can just get to it, uh, yeah, it talks you all, all the close combat. Uh, and it will talk you through the how you determine the German activation, which is sort of my, my AI system. I have done separate videos for those as well. It's a priority stack type system, which if you're not familiar with that, basically you run through a list of priorities to determine what the counter will do. So if there's, you know, if there's a, um, uh, the lower priorities would be if the German counters have, have, have jammed, but here, for example, priority number one, if there's an allied infantry counter in the open ground, in range of fire, line of sight, well, that German counter is going to shoot at it. It's pretty straightforward. If they're wounded, and the German counter has an MP as a um, uh, MP40, then they will charge and try and charge it because they will have a better uh, statistical chance of taking that counter out. So it's based on um, a stack ranking system and based on a sort of a an odds system as well to so take care of it. So you don't need to worry about any of that. You should simply run through this. And again, I've done separate videos for that, and uh, all the resources are there. On, uh, on YouTube for you to be able to watch. Um, so yeah, that's a sort of a quick overview. Like I said, the game is um, it's completely free. Um, I did it for, for a couple of reasons. One is that I've been toying this site with this idea of doing this crash glider uh, map and scenario, and um, it's you know it, help, it helps me uh, be, keep being creative um, in the evenings. Uh, so I've enjoyed very much doing the art for that and thinking of the design and play testing it. And plus, I wanted to give it away completely free because at this point where we are, um, you know, as a global society, as a global bunch of gamers, I thought people would appreciate and it would be cool for people to have a, a fun game that they can print out quite quickly on a few sheets of paper and get to the table. And it can all be, obviously, if you've got a printer at home, it can all be done from home. The only thing you'll need to provide is a couple of six sided dice. Um, and yeah. That's that's pretty much where where's that. So in terms of feedback, um, <clears throat> uh, there's a the board game geek page for um, until the bitter end. The U.S. Airborne is where you want to be. Uh, there's two board game geek uh, um, sections for this game until the bitter end, and you want to be on the U.S. Airborne version. That's the more recent version of the game, and that's the one where uh, on the forum. I've opened up a thread so people can discuss the, this scenario, give any feedback, um, and um, let me know their thoughts. I would say this game, I've playtested it um, quite a bit, but I'm really interested in what people think. So this is sort of the playtest version of the game. Um, so I'm happy uh, to sort of amend the game, listen to people's feedback. If people think it's too easy or it's too hard, solitaire, I'm happy to amend that. Um, just get gather people's thoughts now where can you get this game from okay uh, if you go to the board game geek um, page that's probably the best place to get it from um, if you're on Facebook the solitaire war gamers group and the war gamers group um, there's a post from me on there um, which has all the links um, the links are spread between board game geek and my own personal Google share which I've shared for this game I'm actually in the process of copying the files from that onto the Board Game Geek re, uh, resource page, so under the files section. Uh, but you should be able to get, uh, yeah, all the all the uh, all the links there. So I'm just going to uh, well, let's have a look at that. 
Hi. So, yeah, I, I just realised, I thought it was probably worth making a point. Um, the Players Aid um, have kindly, Grant's really kindly put a, a small article up on their page, which is great, um, and you can get the files from there. So if you go to theplayersaid.com and uh, go to um, the feature here, and it's it's entitled uh, Free World War II Print and Play Game from, from that way, um, you can scroll down. Um, and they've listed um, some interviews that they that I've done. Is is actually an interview with me um, on the uh, until the bitter end as well. So that's the that's the game, the parent game, I call it really for this free game. So you can read that interview uh, if you're interested. Um, plus a few things about some of the games that I've done. Um, and uh, what he's what they've done there is very kindly copied and pasted the. Facebook pay, uh, post that I did. So there's the board game uh, geek link to the game, and um, you can get all the and and the link to my Google Drive as well. So between those two, you you'll be able to get all the files that you need. But like I said, I am migrating the files from here from the Google Drive onto the board game geek. I will keep them there for a while. Any problems or questions, um, just uh, message me. Um, through Board Game Geek or through Facebook, if you're on Facebook, um, I'm sure if you if you can't get hold of me that way, I'm sure if you message the um, players aid um, or Dan Picardi, of course, um, Dan will be able to put you in, in contact with me, no problem at all. So, like I said, it's a it's a totally free game. Um, it's for everyone. It, it, honestly, it's for everyone. Print it out, play it. Let me know what you think. If there's things you like about it, great. If there's things you think could be tweaked, I'll tweak them, you know. Um, and like I said, it's there to help me uh, keep keep being creative, keep being sane in the evening. Give me a little project to do and uh, a game for everyone. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Compass Games and Brotherhood and Unity. This is a card-driven war game which depicts the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina from 1992 to 1995. The Mary and Tom Show, where they talk about social distancing, obviously. And why do he just didn't throw the vegetables in the blender? Yep, Horse and Musket Annual 2 released. Also, upcoming releases and canvas maps and more. And Mauro Faina has a couple of episodes out. Episode 74 talks about Squad Leader and their expansions. And episode 75, he titles it SPI Forever. Another week, another show. Please help support this channel. Thank you to my supporters. Thank you to the people subscribing. And thank you for watching. These are weird times. We'll... We'll do some live shows, try to entertain some people, play games, and above all, people, be safe. Just remember, be safe. All right? Thanks. I'll see you next week.
You know what I like about Word Forge games? Everything. I like the way they box their games. I like the art design, especially the war games that I'm into. They're light war games, so you guys should give this a try, especially D-Day Dice. And they don't just have war games, but let's not talk about that now. Let's get into D-Day Dice. So let me put everything into perspective. From England, you're coming on a boat to hit the beaches in Normandy. Remember that, you're coming on a boat. So before you hit the core game of D-Day Dice, do or die is their motto, you gotta go way to hell. So you get off the big boats, of which there was 5,500, and you get on these little boats. And your main mission is to survive and land. And this is where you land. This number on the boat means that every single turn you lose one man. Now, if you go here, that means you lose an extra man. Plus, if you roll four, seven, or ten, you lose that many more men. Uh, what chance do you stand? The same chance they stood. <laughs> Here's your D-Day dice map. Start with four men. But in way to hell, you start with the maximum amount of men. And if you can have at least four men while you land, you're lucky. Now you're in hell for one year. Because that's how long it took them to liberate Europe. After it was occupied for five years. Think about that. Europe, seven years ago, was occupied by the Germans for five years. A white box means you can stay there three turns. The three means you lose three men every single turn. Now, if you move right, you gain something. But black box means you can only stay there one turn. Plus, you lose six men. So if you want to keep going right, well, do you have a mine detector? Because there's mines there. No, you don't. So you go center. Center, you gain something. And also, you can stay there three turns, but you lose four men. What's this? A machine gun roll. So you roll every turn, and you lose that many more men, plus the four men every single turn. So whether you go left or right, you lose something. Left, you lose the mine detector. Plus, you lose a special item. There's a machine gun, and every turn, you lose ten men. Now that you cross over into the bunker, you got to roll for mines. There's a machine gun. Every turn, you lose 15 men. So now you got to make that a bunker. Every turn, you lose 20 men. There's a machine gun. And if you're left with one man, you win the game. Oh, I'm exhausted. I want to be my new girlfriend. <laughs> one, she's not your girlfriend. Two, she has a cat. Three, shut up. She plays Euro. <laughs> you want to play a Euro? We'll play a Euro. Really? Which one? <laughs> this one. So this game is resource management and card assisted game. This all helps you. It's not die, die, die all the time, though you will. So remember I said if you're left with one soldier, you win the game? Well, yes, but not really, because there's an expansion for that. It's called Inside the Bunker. So you get extra cards to fight inside the bunker. The bunker expands, and you use that with another expansion called Airborne in Your Pocket. Okay, so you know what? Next week, we're going to talk about Airborne in Your Pocket with the Bunker expansion. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Eek.